So, when trying to install the package Laravel WebSockets, we are given an error telling that our requirements could not be resolved. So, to fix this, we open our composer.json file and add it manually to the require key of the JSON with proper versioning. Add the Laravel WebSockets library to the require and quickly save the file. We then run composer update to resolve the previously faced errors and it should work now. In a new terminal, we'll publish the configuration and migration files required by the newly added package. Before running migrations, quickly ensure MySQL is up and running and then run PHP artisan migrate. Since using an old database from previous experiments seems like the required tables are already on the database and there's nothing to migrate adding the pusher php server to our project the configurations for the pusher php server must be updated in env to use our own so updating the broadcast driver to pusher and the app id and keys to your own credentials. The env config are used in the WebSockets config files. In the broadcasting config files, we'll add few of our own settings to the pusher connection driver. In app.php config, Quickly uncomment the broadcast
things to tweak here like if the constructor could receive the payload to be transmitted or the channel on which it needs to be transmitted onto. Likewise, the event name to be used for the transmission. You can tweak a lot of things here but let's try to keep it simple for now. Channel to transmit on is app.user.1 Event name to be used is new message event and our payload which is a public property is hello world. Likewise, the authorization of the channel must be configured in the channel's root. This can be confusing, but it's really not. Return true if you want authorized user to listen to this channel and false otherwise. App user ID is requested by the front end app to listen onto and on the callback function, we'll receive the currently authenticated user in user and ID is from the channel name. So compare the two, do some calculations and determine if the authenticated user is authorized to listen to the private channel. In the API route, we define the middleware to be used for the authentication of the channels. Now, how is the authenticated user recognized in the broadcast route, you may ask? Because in the API route, we define the middleware to be used for the authentication of the channels. To quickly show the event file from Laravel, use Tinker. Quickly checking if we have the user previously added, which we'll use later. Use the event function to fire the chat event. Now it's showing in the dashboard as expected. Let's uncomment the previous code in chat event file and use the constructor. Now firing an event should result in an error, but I'll have to restart my tinker session because it's still using the previous event class. Now we should be able to pass the ID and broadcast on a specific channel. 
In the next video, we'll wrap this up with a front-end view app that can listen to these events when authenticated.